With Nigeria hit by the spread of COVID-19 and the associated sharp decline in oil prices, a range of measures have been implemented to contain the spread of the virus, including closure of international airports, public and private schools, universities, stores and markets, and suspension of public gatherings. Work at home is also encouraged in several states and government institutions. How are employers managing running costs and how are they intending to pay their staff this period? Joining us to take a look at this is the MV CEO, Cowrie Outset Manager, Johnson Chuku. Good afternoon, Johnson, and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. What has the lockdown done to business such as yours and other private owners? Well, I believe most businesses are bleeding. Um, it has now virtually affected every business. Um, there is no business currently that present in the country that has not been in somehow uh, negatively affected. So companies are struggling to remain afloat. Some companies are suffering more, while others uh, have a um, moderate impact. Take, for instance, the airline business. They are completely shut down, so they are losing entire revenue. Um, the entertainment industry has been shut down, particularly event centers. Hotels have been largely uh, empty. Uh, businesses like ours that are into investment banking are also suffering. Uh, the basic thing is that we hope that this does not last beyond the next two weeks that the president has announced as a lot for lockdown in Lagos and uh, Abuja as well as a good state. Yes. If it does last, then we may be looking at um, palliative that you have in other countries. For instance, in England, the British government is paying 80% of the wage bill of all employees in private sector entities beyond the government entities. So that will uh, provide liquidity to those, uh, those companies to sustain the operation. Um, I just read uh, two days ago that uh, Virgin Atlantic is acting for the bailout. The U.S. government is also extending similar uh, support to businesses. Uh, the government has actually come up with the central bank and the, has actually come up with some level of palliatives. And National Assembly, the House of Rep, has also come up with um, um, an intervention uh, emergency uh, bill, which unfortunately has not scaled through the, uh, the Senate and has not been signed into law. Some of them are supposed to provide palliatives to businesses that are co continue to pay salaries between March and, and June. Um, they can get 50 billion of the uh, of the uh, the payee tax as a um, corporate tax rebate, but that for me uh, it's it's good, but it's not far reaching enough. Okay. And then the informal sector has also been left in a lodge. Um, you have to look at that uh, more than um, there are more than 40 million um, uh, small and medium scale enterprises that are highly informal. And that uh, currently, all the measures so far announced are not taken into consideration their losses and the fact that they may not even survive the one week of lockdown. Right. So I think a lot more needs to be done to moderate the impact of um, this uh, COVID-19 uh, on the businesses and the citizens of this country. All right, and talking about the businesses of the citizens of this country, we do understand the economics of business. And also, we understand that with this lockdown, businesses still have running expenses to make, although revenue will definitely de de um, decline significantly. How can this be managed? I, I think uh, what will happen is that uh, the businesses will try to cut down on what you call discretionary expenses. Uh, those expenses are the, what we call, what we call avoidable expenses as well. Um, take, for instance, the issue of energy consumption. Since many business operators would be working from homes, the running of generators, the purchase of diesels, we have, they have to cut down that. Um, there may be other expenses like uh, vehicle fuel and the expenses uh, that uh, businesses incur as a result of moving around. Those costs, they also have to moderate. Um, but they are expenses that are difficult to, to manage and like the wait period. Uh, like I said earlier, um, we hope that this does not last for too long. If it does, then businesses may have to look at their wait period and cut down on those uh, on the salaries and wages they're paying their staff if the government is not in the position to provide uh, some support. Interesting, you did make mention of salaries now. In particular, um, in the payment of salaries of staff, um, how, how do you think employers can manage to keep afloat, particularly when it comes to the issues of salaries? Well, one of the things I know some companies have done is to ask their staff to go on a compulsory leave. Some of them on paid leave, some of them on, on, on paid leave. 
But the fact remains that if uh, the shutdown continues, the businesses are going to pay with their the business owners are not going to pay with their hands. The businesses actually operate to make regional revenue, and they they pay salaries and wages from those revenue generated. As it stands today, some of the businesses are going to completely uh, uh, will not generate any revenue. I com have completely lost their revenue for this period. So. They will be paid, some of them will pay for reserve, from reserve to sustain their workforce. But if it lingers, they will also run out of reserve and may not be able to continue to pay wages. Uh, I did say earlier that other con countries have undertaken or underwritten the wage bill of corporate organizations in their countries to make sure that people continue to end their salaries and wages at this point in time, and that the businesses also do not uh, become bankrupt in trying to sustain their wage bills. Uh, we may get to the point where the government may also have to consider similar uh, intervention uh, to save the economy from uh, going into deep recession. All right. Come 11 p.m. today, the cessation order by the president takes full effect in states like Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory. Now, what do you think will be the implications of this restriction of movement to businesses, mostly in Lagos State? In, 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 interestingly, business activities in Lagos have actually slowed down in the past one week uh, since the government uh, tried to restrict movement, uh, or particularly the restrict business operators other than essential business operators like um, the food vendors and similar businesses. So what we're now having here, we're going to see a lockdown. And the lockdown will now mean that even those who go to markets to make sales will no longer be able to do that. A lot more businesses will now shut down. The president did say that um, apart from essential uh, businesses, that other businesses should shutter. Uh, I, I expect that you're going to see almost uh, a near uh, lockdown in Lagos uh, starting from 11 p.m. today.